All right, to talk about this military boasting, I'm joined tonight by Bradley Bowman. He's with the Foundation for Defenses of Democracies in Washington. He's also a former national security advisor to the U.S. Senate. Bradley, it's good to see you again. Um, what should we believe? Um, should we believe Vladimir Putin when he makes claims that he's number one in the world now? I uh, think we should uh, sprinkle a healthy dose of skepticism to everything that Putin says. Uh, there is a track record there of exaggerating their capabilities. But with respect to these hypersonic uh, missiles, these hypersonic glide vehicles, specifically the Avangard system that they announced was operational in late December, uh, there is no doubt that is a formidable weapons capability that would appear to be more advanced than what the U.S. currently has fielded. Uh, so that system is designed, let's be clear, to attack the United States here at home. It's designed to fly at extraordinary speeds and to uh, in, uh, evade interception. This is a system designed to kill Americans at home. And so um, we should take it seriously. But to use a metaphor, uh, you know, in terms of military capability, Russia is tall, but they are not 10 feet tall. Uh, you know, Russia's economy is roughly the size of the state of New York's economy. Uh, the average Russian troops lacks the combat experience of American troops. For pound for pound, there's just no comparison between the U.S. and Russian military. But there are areas like this where they are ahead of us, primarily because they've been working on it a long time. The U.S. has not lacked uh, the ability to have such a system. We just have lacked the political will for a long time or are caught uh, asleep at the switch for too long. Yeah, I wanted to say, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day either, and you, you don't build hypersonic missiles in a day either. I mean... The United States has not been caught um, by surprise with, you know, with this type of weapon. Uh, has the U.S. stood by and watched Russia move forward, at least in terms of hypersonic missile technology? Have they willingly let themselves be beat by Russia? It's a great question. Uh, you know, with, with uh, defense expenditures and defense investments, research and development, these sorts of things, there's uh, virtually infinite threats and finite resources. The problem for the United States, since at least since the 2001 terror attacks, is that we've simultaneously been trying to conduct operations in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, maintain the readiness of currently deploying forces while also modernizing our forces. And that, combine that with unpredictable funding and authorizations coming from Congress, late funding, late authorizations, we created a problem. And when we had to choose between current operations and modernization, we consistently chose current operations. Uh, and as a result, uh, uh, China and Russia in some areas leapfrogged us and uh, American military superiority in some areas deteriorated, creating uh, uh, the situation we're in now. The good news over the last three years or so, we've had more sufficient funding, defense funding, more timely resources, and the U.S. is uh, actively uh, reestablishing it's uh, military superiority, but it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Like you said, these weapons were not built in a day, and neither was Rome. Mm. And how does this fit into the, the global geopolitical uh, picture, especially with China emerging as a military power now? Is the United States, is the Pentagon more concerned about what China will produce one day than what Russia is producing now? If I were asked to rank order the leading threats to the United States, I would put China number one. I would put them as a more serious threat than Russia. Uh, you know, Russia is serious. They've got a modernized uh, nuclear triad, nuclear arsenal. They're on the UN Security Council. Putin, as is often said, is playing a weak hand. Well, China has a much, much larger economy, has a comprehensive systematic strategy. They've conducted the largest theft of intellectual property in human history. I view China as a much more formidable threat. But both of these authoritarian powers represent a threat to the U.S. and our allies in Europe. Uh, and uh, the U.S. has, we've awoke to that fact in recent years. Our European allies and partners are awakening to that fact, too. Uh, and this is not just a classic, you know, Bismarckian, Machiavellian great power, uh, realpolitik competition here. This is, these are authoritarian regimes who are representing a fundamental challenge to our democratic way of life and the international state system this facilitated prosperity, unprecedented prosperity and security since World War II. With China and Russia, they have also, um, you know, come together in certain types of war games and exercises that they've conducted jointly. How concerned are you in Russia and China 
joining forces uh, to create some type of a military monolith against the United States one day? It, it's a great and welcome question. You know, said that recently there was joint naval exercises between China, Russia, and Iran. You know, it said you can judge someone by the, the company they keep. Uh, that's interesting. We know that uh, China and Russia conducted major, uh, in some ways, unprecedented exercises in the last year or two between the two of them. Energy projects going back and forth, China purchasing Russian air defense systems. So there's a lot to point to to be concerned about. But there's also some historical sensitivities, concerns uh, between those two powers as well. So they're not going to be best buddies anytime soon. But they clearly see it in their combined interest to uh, stand up to the U.S. To, and our allies to poke us in our eye and try to uh, push us back and, and change the international order that's more to their liking as authoritarian powers that don't believe that their power comes from the consent of the government. Yeah, well, whoever wins in November will have plenty of China and Russia on their plate to deal with, that's for sure. Bradley Bowman with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies joining us tonight from Washington. Bradley, as always, we appreciate your analysis. Thank you. Thank you.